top story, Oakland police are offering a more than $30,000 reward, searching for the person that shot and killed a security guard. The shooting happened here at 14th and Webster in front of Prime 356. A Cron reporter and guard were there to interview the store owners about a smash and grab involving some 30 people Monday night that was captured on a surveillance camera. The owners came back to the store today when thieves arrived with guns blazing. It's the nationwide increase in violent crime. The homicide rate in Oakland is at its highest point in almost a decade. We're getting reports of shots fired southbound 880. I'm someone was shot. There's a child that's bleeding from the head. Paramedics rushed that baby boy to Oakland Children's Hospital. Unfortunately, doctors could not save him. Little baby boy was just 23 months old, and Jasper was her only child. Losing such a young child gave many people pause while passing by that freeway today. I'm very sad for, for that, that young child that, that died. And you never know when the senseless violence is going to break out and when your life could be in jeopardy. Even those who had heard of the shooting don't want to accept the violence has gotten so bad that a baby in a car seat is no longer safe. Unfortunately, gun violence is a headline in America every single day. If you look at it, about 54 lives lost per day in this year, that's about 14 more deaths per day on average from the previous six years. As of 2018, it was estimated that there are approximately 400 million civilian-owned guns in America. That means there are more guns than there are people or cars in the U.S. By comparison, Americans own more guns per capita than any other country, accounting for about 40% of the world's total gun ownership. Around the 19th century, there were at least nine countries that had the right to bear arms in their constitution. But as years passed, most of these countries made changes revoking or limiting gun rights. As of 2021, only three countries cite the right to bear arms in their constitution, and the United States is one of them. The reason for division over gun ownership isn't just because the U.S. owns the most guns. It's because it also has the highest rate of mass shootings, gun-related homicides, and firearm suicides among similarly developed nations. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic. Let me say it again. Gun violence in this country is an epidemic, and it's an international embarrassment. Most gun regulation laws were passed without much opposition until 1968, when President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Gun Control Act. But this started to change years later, when the NRA became an advocacy organization centered on the Second Amendment, bringing with it a huge influx of money. To stop a bad guy with a gun, it takes a good guy with a gun. The AR-15 is one of the most effective tools available to protect yourself and your family. We will stand and fight against any sure-to-fail form of government gun control. Their solution is to make you, all of you, less free. It's a fraud. What they're really doing is representing the interests of the gun companies. This is an organization that receives millions of dollars every year from gun companies directly. For decades, the NRA has pushed legislation that um, not only supported a lot of gun ownership and the proliferation of guns, but also stifled the study and spread of information, right, about the causes of gun violence. Nowadays, the NRA spends between two to $5 million annually lobbying for gun rights. And during the 2020 elections alone, the association spent $29 million in political campaigns. And we believe in freedom and liberty, and the right to keep and bear arms. President Biden is not pushing legislation through Congress right now. It's a reminder of how difficult that is. Since the pandemic began, gun violence has spiked across the U.S. And some of the factors that really contribute to, to what we're seeing are the social and economic um, instability and inequality that, that we've seen consistently, but also particularly as a result of COVID. And what Chicago researchers identified is that, that gun violence is uh, you know, epidemic 
in relation to gang violence. These gangs have been identified by the FBI as having, in many cases, less than 10 people. They're just young people who surround themselves with the streets because, honestly, the after-school programs have been cut. A lot of the community resources have been cut. There are no jobs and there is no access to mental health care or anything else. Experts say COVID-19 has widened disparity, increasing tensions. 18-year-old Alton Spann now charged with first-degree murder in the death of 24-year-old Chao Zhang Zing. Spann confronted the UFC grad student when he was walking home. Zing was shot in the chest and robbed. He later died at the hospital. They end up going to a store and, and pawning the possessions for $100. $100 for uh, Mr. Zing's and his family's grief. could be on pace to be America's deadliest year of gun violence in the last two decades. People are afraid to go to malls. People are afraid to go to theaters. People are afraid to, to go to parks. The environment is a, it's a hostile environment. It's a war zone. I should have been there. Because when you promise a kid that you're going to protect them. Shots rang out near Nationals Park, causing a panic during America's favorite pastime. Shocking many, except for another little girl. It was my second shooting, so I was kind of prepared. Because I always am expecting something to 